Aloha everyone, this is May 7th and 8th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. We're going to couple both of the days together in this episode. This might occur throughout the series at certain points when there isn't a significant amount happening on any individual day. In this episode we're going to cover fissures 11, 12, 13, and 14. We start off at the Kilauea summit. The lava lake within the Holly Mountain Mile crater is rapidly receding. This Lava Lake was overflowing in late April. At this point, small earthquake activity around the summit is common, creating rock falls that produce small ash plumes that put up into the air. The lava though is draining somewhere. We now know where that is, but at this point in time, in Leilani Estates, things are relatively quiet. However, much of the earthquake activity that was common in Leilani Estates for the previous weeks has also diminished. The eruption that started in Lower Leilani Estates has been working its way back up the rift zone with each new fissure. However, the fissures that are left behind still have some attitude to them. Fissures 11 and 12 continue the trend by emerging up rift of the previous activity. These two fissures are relatively short lived, lasting only a couple hours, and happen just outside the neighborhood. No homes are lost by either of these fissures. You can see fissures 11 and 12 in the bottom left. Panning to the right, you can see this line of fissures cutting across the neighborhood. Now, this is the first day of relatively calm in Leilani Estates, so a lot of people are going in and trying to get some evacuation done. However, many people that were prepared for the eruption, they had gathered their possessions and were waiting to go, they weren't allowed back in to collect their belongings. So there were good people with trailers already loaded, not allowed to go in and hitch up and remove them, and by this point in time it's already too late. Fissures are labeled here in this time lapse from the PG cam stationed behind the Puna Geothermal Venture looking back into Leilani. At night, there's not a significant amount of glow coming from the lava flows or from the fissures. Meanwhile, this is the scene inside Leilani Estates when many go back in to check on their residence or continue the evacuation. They find cracks or lava flows impeding their progress. The lava flow from Fissure 8 that ended on May 6 is still glowing down inside the cracks. This is Kahukai Street heading towards Leilani Avenue. The Kahukai Hill is just behind us. Now, this is the road and the route that was recommended less than 24 hours beforehand by Civil Defense to use as an emergency evacuation route. South Moku Street is deteriorating rapidly with cracks splitting the roadway. This is going to be one of the more important routes into Lower Leilani on the south side in the coming weeks once all other routes are covered with lava. Further up rift at Highway 130, cracks are also splitting the roadway. We have two distinct sets of cracks roughly 300 feet apart. And these cracks have begun steaming, emitting gas emissions, and widening at roughly a centimeter a day. There's also areas of sag and uplift. And using these details, USGS is able to figure out that the dike feeding the eruption must have come up to almost 160 to 330 feet below the surface in this area. So it came really close to becoming another fissure. Evacuations on May 6 also created some pretty nightmarish traffic conditions, especially on Highway 130 leading up to Leilani Estates. So the National Guard is creating a secondary checkpoint back in the town of Pahoa. Puhu Onuopuna is also trying to expand the information hub and coordinate with evacuation teams to help people get out their belongings in the impacted areas. It is now May 8th. Back in Leilani Estates, the fisher count remains at 12. People are wondering at this point, where is activity going to go to next? There's some eyes looking upslope from the previous activity at fissures 11 and 12, but that's not where the lava ends up going. Back on Kahukai Street, this is the area that we drove over earlier in this video. Fissure 13 emerges. 
Fisher 13 ends up cutting off Leilani Avenue, so the access from the bottom of the subdivision is severed entirely. These aerial shots show fresh batter on the roadway and the service lines running into Leilani Estates, the plastic coating on those has caught fire. Now Fisher 13 is not going to be active for long, a couple hours. The scene on the ground has an eruption happening on both sides of the roadway on Kahukai Street. Gas emissions saturate the area and have already killed all the vegetation nearby. Andrew Hara here is an associate. We worked together closely during the eruption and we'll go into more detail in coming episodes on that. Also on May 8th is opening of Fisher 14 on Calpili Street, again on my parents' property. Not any good footage of this Fisher opening that day. The following morning, USGS took this photo. All right, well, thanks for joining me on this retelling of May 7th and 8th of the 2018 eruption of Kilauea in the Lower East Rift Zone taking place inside the residential community of Leilani Estates. At this point, the eruption is mostly confined to Leilani Estates and just outside the perimeter. That's going to change in the coming weeks. We're going to see an escalation in activity as magma intrudes further down the rift. If you like this type of content, make sure to like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. All these kind of things really help the channel grow, help us produce more of this content for you. All right, mahalo.